tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, I am a 911 operator. Uh, I've been an operator dispatcher oh my for God. about two years now. Really? Did we call you? <laughs> Help. Yeah, Help. Oh, yeah. yeah. Help. It just occurred to me right now that someone may have We're... called 911 and I mistakenly thought it was a fan. Aww. So someone here in my building is having a heart attack. No, it was me. Yeah. I just want out. You want out. And I thought, oh, good, another fan. Hey, how's it going? Um <laughs> Wow, that's very cool that you're a nine. I have a million questions for you if you're a nine one one operator. Okay, shoot. All right. Well, I'm just curious. First of all, um, what kind of train do you train for that? How do you become a nine one one operator? Yeah, so it's actually surprisingly entry level. Um, I just walked in because I, I did, I'm chubby now, but there was a time when I was a little more fit and I wanted to maybe be a firefighter. And my dad said, "I don't think you'd be a good firefighter because." Uh, you're not very good in high pressure situations. And I said, screw you, dad. I'm going to go for the most high pressure job that I can think of now. <laughs> so I walked into the 911 county office and I said, are you guys hiring? And they said, yeah. And uh, you just have to take this test before you come in to see if you're, you know, if you can handle it. And then there's three months of boot camp in that office and for to teach you basically everything you need to know. And if you pass all that, then you're good to go. They They train you a little more with shadowing a person and then, once you're cleared off on that, then you're on your own. This so is, I was probably in training for about four or five months. Wow. Uh, first of all, there's, so, there's a lot to unpack here, as my wife would say. Your father. Your father told you, no, you're, you shouldn't be a fireman because you're not good in high-pressure situations. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty rough. And isn't that kind of his fault? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's two, it's <laughs> yeah. two parts to yeah. it. Well, you should have trained me, Dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, I mean, uh, for you know, there's one way to look at it, which is maybe he was saying that because he wanted to protect you yeah. because he was worried. And then there's another way, which is more in the dick category, you know, where like your dad's not being, you know, it's like don't say that. Where do you think that falls? <laughs> oh my God! I don't know. I mean, he he was a volunteer fireman, so he he kind of knew a little bit about how it all works it I sounds think to me like he couldn't training. hack full time yeah oh. <laughs> yeah again on him is it okay if i try just right now if i called you could you be a 911 your 911 self and we could just run through it and see how it goes sure yeah okay so boop 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 911 what's the city and address of the emergency uh, i'm in los angeles uh, california what was the second part <laughs> What's the address of the emergency? 123 uh, Bigelow Road. Okay, for verification, I need you to repeat the address, please. 123 Bigelow Road, Los Angeles, California. Tell me what the problem is. I was eating this onion, <laughs> and something tasted real weird about it, but it's my last onion, so I just kept chomping it. And now I can't feel my feet, and I can't feel my hands. Okay. <laughs> Are you are you standing right now? I'm standing. I think I'm standing. I'm upright, but I can't feel my feet. I think I'm standing. Okay, are you feeling nauseous? No, I actually feel. I've never felt better. My stomach <laughs> feels fantastic. I mean, I would. Have you been I'm, vomiting or puking blood? Uh, no, more than usual. <laughs> What's usual? I usually vomit in the morning, uh, twice in the afternoon, and then violently for about an hour at night. <laughs> So have you vomited since you last ate this onion? No, no. The onion really calmed me down. The onion's been, by the way, mostly terrific. Uh, my stool, I just want to mention my stool is a white gel. And it has little colorful sparkles in it. Oh, Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Well, that's interesting. No drugs. I don't do drugs. But uh, I had six bottles of Pappy Van Winkle. <laughs> okay, is your door locked? Uh, yes, it's triple locked. It's <laughs> it's locked every which way that a door can be locked. And I have a large bolt that I bought from an old French castle, and I slid that across. No one's getting through that fucking door. Okay, just so that my paramedics can get to you, I need you to unlock all... How many did you say? Six, it's it's like locks? Yeah, six locks, but then that big bolt, and i got to get someone to help me. It's going to be half an hour to unlock this door. I'm very paranoid about villagers attacking me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, By the you, way, the onion the onion's terrific. Can I keep eating it? It's fantastic. <laughs> if you believe that's what's making you sick, then I would not keep eating the onion, no. Okay. You're, man, you're a real voice of reason. This is terrific. I'm, 
I'm working on the door right now. Let's see. Unlock, unlock, slide, bolt, okay, slide. If it's too strenuous for you, then I don't want you to do it. It's no, it's really not. It's not. Worse. No, I'm not feeling bad. My arms are just very, very weak from uh, misuse and disuse. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there we go. All right. Is there anybody there that can help you with the locks? Uh, my wife's here, and uh, my children are here. But they are okay. not interested Have in my Have your wife own. help you with the door? She refused. Have your wife no. help you with the door? We, I'm not. And, she, and if your children can... No. And I want you to send your Fuck children away off, down Dad. the ambulance. Yeah, they have a restraining order against me. They are not allowed to approach me and uh, or I them. Uh, we live in separate parts of the house. <laughs> they say that I'm an odd person, um, and they don't want anything to do with me. But Did my, you tell them how you misuse your arms? <laughs> Shut up! Shut up, Quigley! That's my son, Quigley. Go eat an onion. Yeah. I did. That's the problem. <laughs> it Fuck. worked. All right. Jesus. Later. Okay. Uh, man. Um, sorry for those radio show background people. Uh, the quality wasn't terrific, but you do what you can. Anyway, I'm starting to feel a lot better. Um, and I think, yep, the onion, I just shit it out. It's a clear, now, it's a, now it's a clear gel. Um, I feel much better, and I think I'm okay. I don't think anyone needs to come. I think okay, I'm pretty I'm going to let my paramedics know that, but they're already on their way, so they may still come to check on you, okay? Well, I do have a gun, and if they come in, I'm firing. <laughs> That's my okay. it's stand, your gra- stand your ground. What I love to do is call 911 and then start firing away the minute someone comes through the door. It's not a good gun. It's an old, it's an 1810 revolver, and it keeps falling apart, but I'm just going to be blasting and a blasting if they come in the door. Okay, okay, Conan, for my paramedic safety and the officers that are now responding, their safety, I need you to put the gun away. Can you do that for me? How'd you know his name? (laughs) (laughs) That's right, I never said my name. You're some kind of creep. Call 911. Yeah, call uh, call real 911. Most likely because of the... uh, the defecation and the vomiting that you've already had problems with, we probably already have a little bit of record on Mr. <laughs> O'Brien. And, and especially may- if he calls 911 and just starts blasting away, that's 100% on record. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have put the gun away. I just, I have a large uh, smelting pot here and I just uh, put the gun in and it's been melted down <laughs> and it's, it's just liquid metal now. Um, and some bullets that, oh man, they're exploding. Okay, that was a mistake. I should have taken the bullets out first. But we're good. We're fine now. I apologize for wasting your okay, time. Okay, I need you to get everybody out of the house. If there's explosions going on in the house, I need you to get your wife and children out of Well, the I was fibbing earlier. They left me a long time ago. I live alone, and it's a small walk-up. Uh, my wife took all my money. And um, the divorce proceedings went very quickly, and they gave her everything because they said I'm a fucking moron. Which is the first time a judge has ever said that. Uh, um, but I sense that you're a great 911 <clears throat> operator and you really help me out through this dark time. Do you think we'd ever meet up and have a beer? Oh. Okay. You know, this, this does happen where. Uh, yeah, oh, I know. That's why I'm asking you. I'm asking you. This is still the 911 call. Still, operator, we're still role playing. I'm sorry. Operator, can I, a 911 operator, do you think you and I can ever meet up uh, for some cheesesteaks and a beer? I don't drink, but I'd love a cheesesteak. Terrific. It sounds like a yes to me. Yeah, that yeah. is a yes. Wow. Oh. Very unprofessional. <laughs> that was a test and you failed. I've been shadowing you. <laughs> I work for the government.